Hello everyone, this is Kurode giving you a shoutcast and game one in a series between FS FXO's Straylock versus ATN's Zoke here on Antigua Shipyard. Game one in what I believe to be a best of three series. Hopefully I am not proven wrong. We have Zoke spawning as the what the teal Protoss player here. Meanwhile, we have Straylock spawning as the red Terran player here on the top left hand side of the position uh, of the map. Apparently, Folon was lagging the game just a little bit, forced to leave, and we'll see what's going to happen in this best of three series. Protoss versus Terran, one of those games, or one of those matchups that I don't get to see all too often, and I really want to see um, different styles of Terran versus Protoss. Now, I know that the recent Terran style has been to really try to go for a two racks pressure, even starting the second barracks and before your second supply depot. And, and adding a reactor onto the first one, that's been a common strategy that I've seen a lot of Korean Terran players use against Protoss players. It generally works out well, um, uh, both for offense and defense. If the if the Protoss player tries to go for some four gate um, shenanigans, the one barracks with the reactor will be able to produce enough Marines. If there isn't any four gate shenanigans, or if there's any fast expansion shenanigans or void ray shenanigans, the marines are able to fend off the void ray well enough still. We can see a simulator now being placed down by Zoke. Meanwhile, Straylock opening up with a pretty standard build and getting up that refinery at 13 as a probe now going to come up the ramp and take a look around. Now, taking a look at the barracks so far, the barracks is about to be completed. It needs about another 15 seconds or so. And Zoke is going to get pretty much a lot of information on the inside of this base. He's going to see what's being built and also perhaps figure out what strategy is being executed. A Marine is now being trained and Zoke now needs to see what is being trained uh, and what else is being built before he tries to run away. But he knows that a Marine will be coming out and it looks like Straylock will be just be going into a supply depot. So pretty much a standard play here going into a supply depot. The Marine is out. The probe is not going to be able to get any scouting information whatsoever. And it looks like Straylock going to be going for the much more traditional build, perhaps going for a factory after the supply depot. Taking a look at Zoke, Zoke is training up a zealot. He is going to be able to train up a stalker. And depending on where this one zealot rallies to, he may try to apply some early pressure. SCV is wandering around on the inside here. The SCV looking does spot an extra pylon warping in but he really doesn't know what his opponent is doing as of yet. A Zealot now trying to make its way down the SCV. Oh, very, very smart. And trying to cut away, trying to minimize the damage and has been able to pull away just in time as the SCV does have a faster movement speed than a Zealot, the Zealot unable to catch up. Three Marines now up on the high ground. We'll see um, where these units will go. SCV now attempting to run away. Four Marines now on the high ground as we are going into a classic 1-1-1 one, one, one play. So um, right now we don't have an additional refinery being placed down here. So I'm very curious as to what Straylock is going for. And with this build, the only really viable option would be to try to train up a medevac and then do an elevator drop. Meanwhile, the front door has a lot of zealots and stalkers going back and forth at it. The Marines now trying to push forward, chasing after the stalker. The stalker, however, now being forced to retreat there, taking a look at the losses. The losses slightly higher for Zoke, as Zoke did, or I don't believe he actually lost that scouting pro, but now it is going to be two stalkers to one, and there may not be enough marines here, and that would really be the issue. Not enough marines trying to go up against these stalkers here. The stalkers now battling it out once more. The stalkers getting in some easy shots here. Now in comes the hellions, but the hellions are going to arrive to the party significantly late. The hellions trying to go after the stalkers, and with their faster movement speed, causing a bit of problems here, and <coughs> and nicely done. <coughs> Zoke, now down to 30 over 34 food. And Straylock at 35, Harvester count 27 to 25. Hellions have already made it across the map. And they may be able to get some uh, more damage onto the sentries and the stalkers. There's only one sentry on this ramp right now. There are now three Hellions. There is going to be a medevac. And now a drop straight up onto the high ground. 
and this may deal some economic damage. Pylon does not spot anything at all. In comes the Hellions. Hellions going to be able to one-shot a probe. There's one probe. There is another probe as the Hellions are just trying to maximize their damage. Able to get some easy shots so far. And now retreating down to 59, 46 hit points, 20 hit points, and the medevac goes down. Zoke gets back into the swing of things by destroying Straylocks. Uh, Stray Locks. Medevac with two Hellions, a 400 resource loss there, and now it, the game has pretty much been neutralized. Let's take a look at the Harvester count, 30 probes versus 29 SCVs. Zoke does have his Nexus already up and running, Chrono boosting out more probes. So Zoke is going to um, perhaps continue to grow his probe count compared to the the SCV count but then again Straylock will be able to upgrade to an orbital command as we now see stalkers once again testing that front door the bunker looks like it will be completed just in time are the marines gonna jump inside no one marine jumps inside and now the stalkers are simply gonna ignore that bunker and a little bit of a miscalculation there Straylock asleep at the wheel as now we're gonna see banshees come in the banshees do deal a fair amount of damage and actually attack very, very quickly. We'll see how much damage can be dealt. Jumping inside the bunker. Zoke now forced to retreat as that Banshee without Cloak looks to deal some damage of his own. Now, taking a look back, Zoke does have very good insight onto the base. Knows that most likely Cloak is not being researched. We are going, however, into a Stargate by Zoke. So Zoke already has a robotics uh, facility going into a stargate for phoenixes and after a stargate we, we may even see um we may even see a twilight council as well and that would be the trifecta of the protoss tier 3 and um, route in comes this banshee now the banshee getting off one quick kill but now the banshee is forced to retreat you can see the guardian shield from the sentry does reduce some damage but didn't reduce it enough as you can still see the banshee just trying to test the waters but doesn't really want to engage just quite yet. We are going into double training of Metavax. We are going into Immortals with Phoenixes. The Phoenix should be able to destroy a lot of units here as another probe does get taken out. The Banshee does back off in time. It is now up to three kills, but still has not really paid for itself yet. Needs an additional two kills on the probe line. And then it would be an even trade of 250 resources versus 250. Center of the map, two stalkers going to be engaging against a large number of marines and marauders. There is a phoenix out and about as well. The stalkers, um, the stalkers able to run away in time as all the stalkers and the zealots are now perhaps going to try to guard that front door area. The banshee still hiding off here up to 140 some odd energy. A phoenix could make its way over and it does as Straylock now losing a very expensive Banshee to a, um, an expensive Phoenix, but the Phoenix now has made it well worth it. As we now see, apparently a probe does not need to be destroyed. Yeah, come on. There we go, Straylock taking on that probe there. An observer now just patrolling around on the inside of the base as we are going into Stalker's Zealots and now Phoenixes on the high ground. Phoenixes, very effective since they only shoot at the medevacs as the medevacs oh the medevacs and also um pick up marauders so marauders getting destroyed there one mar or two couple units getting destroyed but now we see nice stim action coming in from straylock straylock opting to push back all of these gateway units as we are now establishing a third base by both players straylock will be lifting and landing that in a moment zoke not too far behind and we'll see um, how all of this will continue to unfold. No upgrades as of yet. We are at the 12 minute mark and now, just now, gonna finish the level 1 weapons upgrade for the infantry. Meanwhile, Protoss army is getting level 1 weapons and armor off of Double Forge. And it could be Chrono Boosted as well as we are also going into a Twilight Council with Zealot Charge. So Zealot Charge gonna be very important in trying to chase down units. And this becomes a situation where whoever has to retreat first ends up losing. The Ghost Academy is getting the Mobius Reactor. Ghost will start off with additional 25 energy, enough for one EMP right out of the gates. However, it does, tr it does cost a fair amount of time, 40 seconds to train a Ghost compared to the High Templar's 5 second on the Warpin, just in case anyone was, you know, comparing 
amulet research versus Mobius reactor research. Not quite the same. Zealots, level 1 weapons upgrade already completed. Level 1 weapons upgrade on the Terran army has been completed as the rocks will fall in a matter of seconds. So far, Straylock has not scouted this out. The rocks will go down, and the Zealots, Immortals, and Sentries are going to get almost a free base here, as Straylock does have a decent saturation. SCV is now, now trying to run away. There's the force field, and beautifully done, beautifully played, as the Marines now look to perhaps get some EMP shockwaves here. Is it going to be enough? There's an EMP shockwave. There's some EMP shockwaves. EM EMPs, however, not hitting the Sentries, as the Marines now trying to push their way through the Stalkers. However going to get quickly destroyed by the sheer number of marines and marauders the ghost with emp able to soften up the army even though there were a couple force fields to deal with still relatively easily handled we are now at 45 harvesters compared to 70 and it looks like straylock knows that he needs to attack in order to get back into the swing of things photon cannons now being added but will it be in time you can see that there is one colossus here the marines and the marauders I'm going to look to just take down this pylon. Ghost now waiting to perhaps get off some... Um, go Ghost waiting to get off perhaps some EMP. And there's an EMP across a large group of units. The Colossus even taking some damage as well. As the Marines and the Marauders are now trying to focus down on the Colossi. The Colossi down it goes as the Marines are now reinforced. Straylock still funneling units from the far side of the map. Rallying them straight into the base. You can see they are rallied right off over here as Straylock going to clean up this Nexus and perhaps clean up a lot of probes. Zealots are charging back in. The Ghost didn't, oh, did get an EMP Shockwave off. And now probes are able to mineral path straight through that and line there. The Colossus does get taken down once more. And Zoke, after one bad engagement, Straylock was able to get back into this. And now Marines and Marauders going to simply walk inside the base, pretty much go unchallenged as there is about a 50 food difference in terms of the army. The supply, uh, the supply difference just simply too much now. Extended Thermal Lance Range looks like it will be destroyed or cancelled before it is finished. Now in comes the Colossus. The Colossus trying to run away. Simply no match for the Marines with Stim and Zoke says GG. So FXO's Straylock taking Game 1 in this series. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned for Game 2.